Hi, uh, my name is Chris Wood. I'm the president of Stargate Studios Canada, which includes Toronto and Vancouver. Our mothership is in Los Angeles, uh, specifically South Pasadena. Uh, we also have offices in Atlanta, uh, Germany, Dubai, Malta, and uh, soon to be open Cairo. Real-time rendering technology, and at Stargate we call that VB Live, is where we build virtual sets and uh, all kinds of environments, bring them to set, and then on a green screen stage with cameras that have special tracking technology, we would marry those two together so that the director behind the monitor can see a composited version of what his actors are doing in a, a real set. Stargate has done a lot of projects globally. Uh, one of the biggest was the uh, premiere episode for a show called Pan Am. Uh, we built the entire Pan Am terminal. So yeah, this was a very big job. Built the entire terminal, which clearly doesn't exist anymore. And we needed that terminal to uh, do so much of the show that it just made sense to build it in a virtual world. Also globally, we've done um, a, an actual live-to-air television show in Germany where we built the virtual sets for a game show, and that was a daily broadcast, so they uh, did this... Uh, the, the virtual marrying of our environments and the live action and broadcast that directly to air. There's quite a few benefits. Um, the, there is the ability, obviously, to build uh, materials that just don't exist anymore. So the environment might be massive, it might be more ornate than you would be able to build in a practical environment, or it might be a period piece such as Pan Am, a, an environment that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, or is off limits to the public. You know, you can't shoot in certain parts of Hoover Dam, for example, for security reasons. So we can build these virtual environments and allow uh, a production team to shoot essentially in that environment without ever traveling anywhere. The other nice thing uh, about uh, shooting virtually is when we want to turn around or shoot in another direction, we can again do it virtually by moving the set around, which would take untold hours for a production crew to do it, but in our world we can simply turn some dials on the computer and are, we're now looking at our set in the opposite direction. The minimum or average cost would be very, uh, there would be a very large difference for given any production uh, because they all have different size. It might be a huge production, but they all might only need a very tiny amount of virtual uh, production. So. Certainly there is different approaches that can be done regardless of the size of the production. Uh, we consult with all of our clients to say maybe this approach makes sense, maybe that approach makes sense, and here are the financial, the financial savings and impacts of going with any, uh, any visual effects, whether it be a, a virtual sets or practical sets. So um, I don't think there's any particular benchmark or limit to, oh, it has to be X number of shots or you have to have a budget of why before this makes sense. Um, and again, developing technology, it's going to make this process less expensive. So as far as the workflow goes, there are uh, several factors to be considered. We're building virtual environments, which is very similar to hiring your construction crew. So we need to be involved in the process very, very early, just as you would with your production designer and his construction crew and very, again, very similar to the way a production designer would work with the construction crew, we would do the same thing, showing him uh, um, test renders and style frames and coming up with color schemes and that sort of thing uh, right from the start and uh, working through the whole production process right up until practical shooting time. So we would typically need at least the same lead time as any other construction crew you know, again, given the scope of how much uh, virtual production you're doing, whether it's a big environment, a small environment, whether it's a lot of sets or one set. So, uh, yeah, definitely got, need some lead time there. And um, with virtual production, the better your planning and pre-production, the better the final product is going to turn out. So we'll also need time to work with the director of photography. If he hasn't done virtual sets before, we need to discuss uh, what the look is, what kind of lighting is going to reflect and make our practical char characters marry into our virtual environment and vice versa. As well, we also need to um, do the physical pre-production, making sure we have our tracking markers for cameras, making sure the camera department is comfortable with cameras, whether they need tra tracking marks or whether it has built-in data. 
uh, to track that information. There is uh, quite a few pre-production things to be considered. And then with your post-production department, it, it's actually a little more streamlined you know, with things like uh, comps or pre-comps that are already done right from the floor. So there's a bit of savings in time and, and uh, effort in post-production. Mm -hmm.